Hi Lala, hello and welcome once again uh, to Lana's Coach. So we're going to basically look at uh, computer ethics. Yeah. So what is computer ethics, right? So we're going to look at the moral uh, principles or actually how we need to uh, behave while using computers. So when defining the term computer ethics, we need also to understand all those related aspects of computer. Talk about network, internet, right? Because all these things are related to the computer. So computer ethics is very broad. So we're going to really look at issues that affects how we use the computer. Like for example, you have intellectual property, uh, computer abuse. What are these in relation to computer ethics? But first, we need to define the term ethics. So ethics is actually uh, a principle of right and wrong. Yeah. From where you are seated or where you are standing, someone is going to tell you whether you are behaving ethically or your behaviors are unethical, right? Does your behavior actually uh, resonate well with the required standards? Yeah. So ethics are used by individuals, right, as a free moral agent, yeah, uh, basically just to give us some standard to guide our behaviors. So in this particular topic, we are going to look at how we need to ethically use computers, right? So if we are not using it in the proper way, then chances are we are not uh, behaving ethically towards the use of computers, right? Now, we can't really proceed with this particular topic without understanding the origin of ethics. So we have to look at the ethical philosophies. So since we are not going to look at the uh, various uh, theories, in details we're just going to highlight so that you understand uh, what ethics are so we have the first theory or philosophy which is egoism uh, which tries to understand what is good and is what is right uh, for you right and of course we have the natural law that needs to apply right in any occasion we should endeavor as human beings to promote our own good practices health and in generally in life also, of course, we have another, the third one, uh, which is very common. Uh, this is utilitarianism, uh, which is actually uh, practicing the greatest good for a greater number of people within the society. So where you are, ensure that at least you influence people positively. And of course, respects uh, for persons is another philosophy, which is added to these three common ones. Uh, people are not just the end. And uh, people are an end, but not just a means, right? So any behavior, any actions that you're promoting, uh, for example, if you're developing a software, for instance, you need to understand the effects that they have uh, on this particular people, right? Whether it's going to uh, affect them negatively or positively. So respect for persons is another philosophy that you need to understand. So having highlighted these key ethical philosophies, now then we need to really understand the various dimensions of ethics. So here, as I mentioned, we are going to look at computer and internet ethics because they are closely uh, related. Uh, when we talk about internet ethics, it means the acceptable or the recommended behavior when you're using the networks or the internet, right? Uh, like, how do you use internet, for example, for your school-related purposes or uh, tasks? Do you watch movies, for example? Is it ethical, right? So internet users should observe honesty, actually, at all time when performing different tasks. Either if you are communicating, whether you are downloading some files, you need to ensure that whatever files you are downloading are actually not maybe pirated for instance yeah so you need to have some informed consent of information or data that you collect within the internet so it's very very important for us to understand how to behave ethically uh, online the other dimension of understanding ethics is the computer itself right because before if we can't really understand uh, the building blocks of how we can ethically use the computer then what follows is that we can't really respect uh, the use of maybe other angles of computer such as networks uh, of information 
uh, internet and so on. So computer ethics basically is a social contract of computer or technology that is equivalent uh, to the formulation explanation. Ba basically it is a policy for the fair use of what? Uh, technologies around us, right? So it, ethics is broad. It, it is like understanding how we behave within a society, right? So ethics cover both social as well as individual policies, right? For the greater good of use of uh, technology. Now, when you talk about technology or computer, we need to understand that a technology always creates some kind of ripple effects in our society, right? And once it creates these particular ripple effects, we are always often uh, disorganized or we don't know how to use these technologies. So that's why we are always in a state of dilemma. And I think we are going to mention what ethical dilemma is. Right. So what is ethical dilemma? Right. So the use of technology has introduced different dimensions of ethical dilemmas that are very unique. Uh, some of us we don't understand that when you use, use a particular technology, it could have some kind of positive or negative impact either to the society or to our friends that we associate with. Right. Now, Doing one thing in a setup, for example, someone is going to ask you to uh, maybe uh, download a particular file, right, uh, to achieve something, right. Now, downloading the file could be maybe something that you're doing genuinely without an issue, right. But again, after downloading the file, you realize that the file has what? It has viruses, right. So, do we stop downloading files? No, we can't. We need to actually have the information right or don't do we stop accessing the internet because of maybe uh, these uh, hackers so we are often placed at a crossroad like using technology always create some harmful impact or a negative impact to ourselves so we are always left to have some kind of dilemma and i think it's a complex situation that often involves an apparent mental conflict yeah, between moral uh, imperatives in which to obey one would mean actually transgressing another. Examples of ethical dilemma are very many, right? I've just captured a few, right? Like for example, when you visit a, uh, some websites, uh, you will, uh, will often be required to give your emails, right? Uh, this could in turn uh, lead to some unwanted mails to your inbox, right? Now, it's a good thing to share your emails with the respect uh, with the respective uh, organization so that they send you the product updates and the services, right? But if this now becomes uh, too much on your inbox, the emails becomes too much in your inbox, then it now leaves us to wonder, is it really a must for us to have our emails being uh, used for marketing purposes, right? So we need to ask ourselves, at what point is it hon honest uh, marketing and at uh, what determines threshold of spamming? So spamming normally are referred to as the unwanted emails, right? So every time you visit website and you give out your email, chances are they'll uh, send you some uh, maybe particular product updates. So you know that spam or the spam mails normally occupy the space of our inbox. So ideally we'll be running out of space for not having the right emails. So it's a problem, it's a dilemma. We are also having another dilemma such as discussion versus bullying. Ideally we need to join forums, we need to join discussion groups, right, uh, to look for uh, some information to collaborate which is a good thing but there is high tendency of people taking uh, these particular uh, discussions for their own intent uh, ill in intentions uh, like for example they start bullying people yeah uh, having the discussion taking another direction so ideally what you are going there to achieve is not really what uh, you are going to get so the discussion might spiral out of control and maybe lead to some kind of bullying. So 
this is another ethical dilemma and of course we have the creativity versus outright lies you are a good designer you love using photoshop right which is a good thing using technology yeah but ideally being creative doesn't really give you that authority to have or present some situation uh, that are not uh, real right so most people normally use this particular creativity to uh, maybe promote some kind of lies which is not uh, good so we should uh, maybe try to balance because at what point do we stop maybe or understand that presenting this information is just beyond <laughs> creativity it could lead to other people's problem yeah take a situation whereby someone is going to photoshop you with maybe uh, some unwanted person in the society yeah so before people realize that this is just some kind of photoshop maybe harm has been caused so it also brings some kind of ethical uh, dilemma all right so within the span of online communication we need to be guided because we need to behave ethically online and i think this is a very uh, important aspect of computer ethics or internet ethics the practice of behaving ethically online is what we normally refer to as netiquette netiquette yeah uh, of course you are going to look at it uh, from uh, the common understanding online etiquette so online etiquette is the correct or acceptable way of communicating or behaving on the internet behaviors are simple as maybe posting a comment on your social profile right commenting on someone's uh, blog those are ways or even sending emails at your friends right so we need to observe the following you need to be respectful that's number one right uh, most people don't want to tell a, uh, can't tell you something uh, face to face they often uh, decide to go behind your back and post them online yeah so that's not being respectful we normally say if you can't tell someone uh, face to face uh, kindly don't go ahead and post it online right do not shout that is the second way of observing etiquette shouting simply means uh, maybe using uppercase uh, letters when you're communicating for example uh, within your email yeah or simply using strong language yeah and a lot of exclamation points right so it presents some kind of shout yeah yeah it's tell someone that maybe you're annoyed and you're angry i mean those are things that you need to avoid uh don't be funny when you're communicating online uh, or sarcastic for that matter sometimes people who receive our information might not understand the fun part of it right so try to avoid this and maybe uh, be careful with your humor and sarcasm or when you're using them online also avoid too much text speak when you're communicating right uh, just follow the normal formal uh, grammar and punctuation rules right when you're communicating for example and using email it's very very difficult uh, to maybe allow your recipient to break down text speak yeah so if maybe your boss or maybe a supervisor or some kind of colleague uh, expect an email from you just be formal avoid use of text speak and of course do not post very private information online or even share uh, truly truly i say unto you there's nothing that is private online right in as much as we normally say that our data is safe online but chances are it could leak to someone on someone's and someone can always use it uh, for their own purposes so I think those are the key observations that you can always make uh, within uh, online. So in a nutshell, when we are using the social media, before we post anything on this social media, before we communicate, we need to use the think keyword, right? Think here means T stands for is it true? We need to think if it is true before we post it or share it. Uh, is it helpful? H, right? Is it really going to be helpful before we post it or share it? Is it going to be inspiring? Yeah, is it going to change someone's life in a way uh, before you really uh, share it? 
and here is it necessary in the first place or you can just stay with it right and of course lastly is it kind right now most of us we normally have that urge right the feeling of sharing information within our social media right i think it's high time we take a break see whether these particular things that we're sharing are going to have some uh, negative impact right on the people who are going to receive or read them and so on so we should be guided by think right as we proceed now as i said that there's a meeting point between the security aspect and the ethics right like for example when you have uh, the hackers or we have some kind of malicious uh, softwares are uh, being used within our computers then high chances they are going to compromise the ethics or how we use computers ethically right it could comprise confidentiality what we refer to as privacy it could promote crime right it could affect uh, maybe some kind of our normal practices and so on so as we look forward on understanding what computer ethics is all about we can't really leave the security angle behind right so the key issues could as we have seen uh, could res result into crime uh, privacy effects right and so on so let's look at them one by one like computer abuse or crime is not something that is ethical these are unethical behaviors that are always promoted right so people use this uh, computer to steal that is not acceptable yeah when people go and access confidential information yeah and they are not authorized that is not acceptable and of course sabotaging the system that is a crime mm -hmm. right so computer crime comprises of different uh, concepts like hacking is one major one a piracy is another one all these are not ethical right they affect how we ethically use uh, the computer and authorized use at work cyber theft yeah so like hacking this is not a good thing to practice right uh, we don't really require an authorized users to access our networks our data our so the hackers normally use different strategies that we need to avoid like they always use some kind of malware yeah to practice phishing that is email phishing spoofing use of trojan horses these are things that we can always uh, avoid through right practices cyber theft is another way of comprom uh, compromising the ethical use of uh, computers right like someone who doesn't have the right uh, credentials accessing our computers an authorized user who has stolen your identity right and they're using it for their own uh, purpose then we have this concept which is not also a good practice <coughs> of using computers like for example an authorized use of computers at work or resources for that matter yeah for instance when you're doing private consulting yeah it's not ethical playing games is not a good thing yeah viewing pornography circulating i mean hunting for jobs all these are an authorized use of computers at work or any given computer resource so you should actually uh, prevent or stop them right a piracy of intellectual property is against the moral values of how we use the computers right why do you pirate someone's uh, software for example right so all these particular inventions uh, i mean creativities from individuals need to be protected uh, by the copyrights or the patents so if someone has their own creativity or creations or actually uh, the inventions we need to respect them so pirating of intellectual property is not ethical this pirated concept uh, properties could be music videos and so on so these are things that uh, we really need to avoid now the good thing is that 
you are not really uh, forced to use uh, the proprietary software. If you can't purchase the licenses, we always have the other options, open source, yeah, that you can always uh, download for free without infringing on these intellectual property rights. Uh, viruses are also a very bad way of actually ensuring that you compromise uh, ethical use of computers, right? So introducing rogue programs that replicate themselves within our computers, destroying data, and causing some kind of disruption uh, is not good. So computer viruses, uh, are we need to actually uh, stop them or eliminate them. We can always use anti-malwares or antiviruses to eradicate them. Another concern when it comes to computer ethics is privacy issues, right? We need to protect our data, ensure that you have strong passwords, uh, maybe work behind a firewall. If you are communicating remotely, use a virtual private network, right? So that we stop people from intercepting or if, if dropping on private uh, information, right? Like contents of the emails, uh, getting to know about the customer information. These are not allowed and it's not a good practice. So some guidelines, or what we refer to as the ethical principles of technology. Yeah, number one, we look at proportionality. The good of the technology must outweigh the harm or risk that it really brings on board. So we should endeavor to actually positively use or maximize the use of computers in a proper manner rather than just looking around the loopholes, the design flaws, just to ensure that you can always cause harm. No, that is not the right. Second, informed consent. We have just looked at the intellectual property, yeah, obeying or respecting it. So every time you want to access someone's innovations or rather creations, uh, try to ask for permission in the first place. You can also refer to that particular, have some references to avoid plagiarism and so on. And of course, you have justice. Every participant, be it the person who is affected and the person who has actually caused the harm, they need to have some benefits and burdens distributed fairly amongst them. So if someone has crossed the intellectual property or has caused some kind of uh, uh, harm, they need to be punished fairly, right? And of course, we need to minimize risks, yeah? Try to avoid using uh, websites that are not secure, using computers that don't, doesn't have uh, antiviruses, sharing your password. I mean, all those things need to be taken care of. Don't really um, expose a lot of confidential information. So some guidance of action to improve or to promote ethical behavior, act with integrity. Yeah? Ensure that you protect privacy and confidentiality of information. So we have a number of ways that you can achieve this. I've mentioned you can always use some kind of privacy settings within your social media networks. Uh, try, that, try to reinforce the firewalls and so on. Do not misinterpret or withhold information, right? We have just looked at the outright lies uh, do not misuse resources, like for example, if you're a student or you are working, you have seen examples of an authorized use of resources at work. Do not exploit weaknesses of systems, like design flaws in the hardware. Now that you are a good programmer and you have realized that there are some kind of loopholes within the database, do not exploit. The good thing is, or the good practice is to notify the database administrator and tell them that, hey, I think the tables or rather the tuples within this particular uh, database they need to be uh, security needs to be reinforced and so on let's have the right standards set high standards uh, through implementing of the right policies it could be security policies within the organization yeah it could be some right uh, the handouts given trainings right and so on and of course it should promote uh, the health and welfare of general public right through creating of awareness of how we need to behave uh, ethically now as we wrap up <clears throat> this understanding of computer ethics or internet ethics for that matter we are often guided by the principles uh, given by the computer ethics uh, institute 
they are normally 10 in number, often referred to as the 10 commandments of computer ethics. So a good person who wants to practice the right computer ethics should conform and really adhere to these 10 commandments. Number one, thou shalt not use a computer to harm other people. We have looked at that. Thou shalt not interfere with other people's computer work. We know how you can interfere. Do not. <laughs> Do not snoop. Or thou shalt not snoop, right? On other people's computer files, thou shalt not use computers to steal, right? Thou shalt not use computers to bear false witness. Thou shalt not co copy. You have already looked at this. Use of proprietary software without their permission, people's permission. You need to pay for the licenses. Uh, they shall not use other people's computer resources without authorization, especially at work. They shall not appropriate other people's intellectual output, right? They shall not. They shall think about the consequences. Like if you're a programmer, yeah, the ripple effect that that particular program is going to cause to the society. Maybe it could be an, a virus or a malware. Lastly, 10, thou shalt always use computer in ways that ensure consideration and respect for your fellow humans. Very, very important. Very, very important. I think the last point summarizes everything. Remember the philosophy, the human aspect, right? So we need to put our fellow humans first before uh, really uh, considering other options. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these ones are just some kind of brief understanding of what computer ethics are. So if you want to understand more about computer ethics, uh, kindly comment below so that I respond. And of course, if you always find this particular information appropriate, informative, and you feel like sharing, please kindly go ahead and subscribe and hit on that Sub, uh, hit on that particular uh, like button so that we keep on uh, producing informative uh, content. Alright, uh, thanks.